Hello! Right, okay, this is a um, going to be a very basic tutorial, just about um, basic finger walking and you know all that type of stuff. I'm going to start really, really low and just like hopefully tutorial wise, just build them up slowly, slowly, and slowly. Uh, this is for some of the guys out there that <coughs> are just learning bass, obviously, uh, and I like, want to know a bit about technique and what they're doing concerning that. Okay, so get on with it then. Right, this is the bass guitar, obviously, uh, created by Lee Fender, 1951, blah, 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 blah. Um, first of all, it's important that you get yourself nice and comfortable. The bass sits on your thigh, right about there. Up at an angle, it's important that you relax. Very important that you relax. There's nothing worse than a, an uptight bass player, because it will come out in your playing and you will sound bad. <laughs> Right, okay, so we relax and we have the bass in our thighs. Right then, let's start off with some basic walking. So you have two fingers, okay? This is, a, this is V technique you need to learn at the beginning as a bass player, unless you're going to be playing with a pick, um, but I don't recommend that. I'm not one that goes with playing with a pick. I think you should learn this first, then go to pick. Uh, playing with a pick is just a tool in the bass player's toolbox, you know, which I'm going to talk about quite a bit, and especially more in uh, other tutorials uh, but this walking with your fingers is a very important thing to learn because it, it builds up the strength in your hands uh, builds up the strength in your fingertips and, which is a very important thing some people just like want to learn bass and they just want to get to like, you know, the, the cocky slap and pop stuff because they see you know, the, the heroes like flee etc doing that um, but you can't bypass this stuff because f for many reasons, rhythmic, timing, um, strengthening of the hands is important. I mean, I know so many people that go straight to the slap and pop stuff and ignore everything else and they end up getting RSI and you know, carpal tunnel syndrome because their tendons aren't strengthened enough. So we need to learn this stuff. We need to get this down, get it out of the way and then you can slap and pop as much as you like. <laughs> slap and pop until your, uh, your big toe falls off. Right, okay then, so we're gonna walk and all we're going to do is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So all we're going to do, the thumb rests, if you have a pickup, on the pickup right here. You can use your index and middle fingers to walk. So the thumb rests right there. And all we're going to do is go left or right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left over and over for years <laughs> until you get it and then we're going to move down to another string which is the A string so we're just doing it on the E string we're going to go down your thumb which rested on the pick beforehand will now rest on the st string the E string that you've just been using we're going to do exactly the same thing okay right left 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 again down one string, thumb rests on the one you've just been using. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Simple stuff, need to know it. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is actually use the fretting hands, this hand, and we're going to actually, on the A string, uh, the E string, we're going to hit an A, and we're just going to go. transition don't just use one string try and get a transition so from string to string without missing any timing try and get yourself quicker and quicker now it's important you do that for a, a real long time um, but where most teachers will say they'll start with that walking technique and they'll be like okay then you, you'll start doing that, like string by string, and then they'll be like, yeah, then, then go to scales, and then you're sitting there for hours and hours and days and days, like, <laughs> doing these scales over and over. I don't, 
I think that kind of takes the passion and the feel and you know like why you got into playing the bass guitar or any instrument in the beginning because um, it's such a magical thing and it's just such a great thing and you want to create music and you want to you know be the best so I think it's important that your passion is um, kept in the instrument and there's nothing that extinguishes that passion more than doing scales, <laughs> scales over them, in my opinion. I know there's so many people out there that like to spend their days, you know, doing scales in, in the shed over and over, but not me. So what I'll do is, yeah, what how I learn is um, by doing that technique, but then incorporating a rift, a riff, sorry, which will make the whole thing a little bit more interesting for yourself. So just make anything up on the E string. Um, Anything, anything that's going to keep you interested in doing it, because at the same time that you're learning, um, and you know you're doing the the, the, the walkie walkie thing, at the same time you're actually creating as well, which is like obviously a really important thing. So just mix it up then. So you've got it, you're doing the walking on the E string, then I uh, just start moving around to other frets on other strings. As you're, you're, you know, you're getting strength in the hand and you're getting strength in your fingers, it's cool. I mean, if, if you feel that scales are the way to go, and you know, just do that, you know, it's cool. Um, it's important to experiment, I think, though, it's important to find your own path with an instrument and find your way of doing things that you're comfortable with. Um, I mean, I've never had a lesson in my life, I've never had one lesson, and I, I still know absolutely nothing about theory. I know where you know my notes are etc and things like that and but I don't know scale and things uh, I, it's just I've, I've really had a good time teaching myself bass. I, I'm 30 now I've been playing since I was 18 um, and I'm completely self-taught and I have my own technique I have my own way of doing things. Uh, obviously the, the basics like that I had to learn from books and stuff <coughs> But then you kind of like get your own feel onto it. Uh, I find if you, you know, are with a teacher for a long amount of time, then you start playing like the teacher, um, and I don't think that's necessarily good, a good thing. So it's important that you, I mean, if you want to go to teach, obviously, you know, do it. But it's important that you experiment uh, and find your own way, and you know, f you know, find your happy accidents by yourself, which is what I love doing. Uh, I think that's uh, that's. A basic thing. Try and play along to anything, you know. If as a bass player, if, if there's like some guy outside, you know, hammering <laughs> a nail into his house, play along to the rhythm, you know. Um, adverts on TV. If you can find, just find a note, you know, right at the beginning, try and play along to it. Uh, yes, that's also a good thing that helped me out as well. <clears throat> so once you've done the one, two, one, two, you can start incorporating three fingers if you if you side wish. That's cool. Um, and then comes the slap and pop stuff, which I'll be doing a tutorial about, obviously. Uh, but it's just a tool, man. It's just a tool. It's not a be-all and end-all to bass guitar. It's just a tool. And if you can get all of these tools into your like bass playing toolbox, then that's a very, very good thing. If you can like have as many ways of playing um, and, and as many techniques of playing, then you're going to be a better bass player, you know, it goes without saying. Right, I think I've covered what I wanted to cover in this in this lesson. I hope it helped. Um, okay, onwards to the next one. You guys take care. Bye-bye.